So this is a lazy and more advanced UV exposure box. Uh, the same thing that Niche from the Lost Light Art uh, channel built. So it's kind of a copy, but it adds some features. So mine is a little bit easier to build. It adds a timer and dimmer function. It also adds a door. If you want to build it, you don't have to. If you don't need it, just use the chapters in the timeline and jump to the point where I'm finished with the door. As always, I put all the links in the description from the, all the materials so you can find it very easily. And with electricity, a fair warning, there's always a chance to hurt yourself or to make things worse. So be aware of that and do everything at your own risk. And otherwise, let's start, guys. I started with a Euro box in the size of 60 by 40 by 12 centimeters. You can go with any box you'd like, maybe even a beautiful wooden one. This is where I wanted to have my door, so I can easily access the inside without lifting it up. My box could be easily cut with a utility knife. Just be careful with your hands and don't put them underneath where you cut. Cutting like that makes it a little bit more light tight and also it's an easier task than to cut it with a Dremel. The Dremel would also remove too much material. And in the worst case this would let too much light in. And yeah, here I'm done already. The little bars need a bit more force. Again, be extremely careful with your hands and body. Always cut away from you. Ta-da! Finally done. Now there is only a hinge missing. I temporarily fixed it with a tape and drilled the holes afterwards. At the end I only had to screw in the screws and cut them with a Dremel. To hold my little door in the upright position, I used a piece of rope and a little clamp. Sometimes the easiest solutions are the best. I could only use one hinge, because I cut around the bars. You can try to cut it straight and use more than one hinge for more stability. Before I glue anything to the box, I need to clean it first. I use the same spray for my Ember types, by the way. I'll link it below. To get more reflections, I use this aluminum tape. I first measured one and then cut all I need to the same length. To mount them into the box is a little bit finicky, but after the second one I got an idea how to do it and got it done pretty quickly. Finally I can mount the LED strips. They are supposed to have a wavelength of 395 to 405 nanometers and 36 watt each. This hole gets me the cables out of the box. First I started to push the cables through the little hole and then I carefully mounted the light strip in the center of the box. The white tape is my spacer so I can bend the light strips more evenly. If you use the same box like I do, Always leave a gap in the same size as the light strip between the lanes to fully fill the box. I had to learn it the hard way and had to do it twice and rip them off again. But luckily I could get them off easily and put them on again. I stripped off the cables a bit more. They are already stripped but I wanted to make sure they have a really good connection. Now I only had to connect them to the plugs and glue these guys with a hot glue onto the box. Before gluing I always grind and clean the surface. To get as most light as possible out of the box I put another line of this tape around the corners. With that I also could hide the cables. Before I did that I protected the other end of the light strip lights with electrical tape. It was much easier than soldering and I still think it looks really good. Now I put the power supplies together with tip ties. I put a spacer in between just in case they are getting hot. I used this power cord splitter to avoid any soldering and also added a switch adapter so I can turn it completely off. Depending on the power supply you get you may need a different switch and a different splitter. To regulate the output power of your strips, I bought two analog dimmer controllers and also two digital ones. More about them in a minute. In the next step, I put two velcro tapes on the box and the other velcro tapes on each dimmer. Now I only had to connect the dimmers with the lights and the power supplies with the dimmers. 
And everything works as expected. Very cool. Now comes the fun part. If you use the digital dimmers, you can do much more. First, you have to install the app that is mentioned in the manual. If you allow the app a Bluetooth connection, it will connect automatically to the dimmers. And the cool thing is that it automatically groups both of the dimmers, so you can control them both at the same time. You can change the light output power in percent. That's pretty cool because you can write that down and use it for different scenarios. And the next cool thing is that you can set a time when the light should turn off. So you don't have to worry it is in there too long. After you set this, you can close the app on your phone and these two controllers are still remembering to turn off the light at the configured time. This is pretty helpful for me because now I can write down the exact time and the exact percent of light I used for this negative. This will be pretty helpful for later prints. Now let's test this. I put in one of my first prints, started the app and enabled the light. Now I didn't use the timer, I used the gradient on and off function. The cool thing is there I can set the time directly. I measured it and exactly after 5 minutes it turned off. As you can see it's pretty cool, now I can open the hinge and leave everything that's on the box on there without moving it. I think this is pretty cool. With the timer and with the dimmer I can check and learn. I am pretty happy with my first result. And in the future I will raffle one of the prints on my Patreon page. Because I thought the light was a bit dim, I measured the ampere and on 12 volt it had about 2.2 amperes. That would be about 26.4 watt and not 36 as advertised. I contacted the company and will let you know as soon as I hear back from them. I don't think it's gonna be a big issue because my prints turned out well. Uh, so I hope this was another helpful video for you guys. I will use this box probably also in winter if I want to do a silver maintenance or maybe even if I want to shoot a port not a portrait, maybe a still life. Maybe I'll try it somet uh, sometimes. I know there are other UV sources out there, they may have a lower UV wavelength, but they are probably more dangerous to your eyes and to your skin. And for sure they are more expensive, so this one uh, worked pretty well for me. For the first test I'm still learning, so this is something you will see in upcoming videos that I'm doing more with salt prints and alternative printing techniques. Thanks a lot to my Patreon supporters again, uh, you guys rock really, you make my life easier here to make more content. And you saw some videos about my darkroom renovations lately that are not so successful, but I'm getting there. Thanks a lot to you guys here as well. Uh, if you want to support me here, just uh, press the bell icon and subscribe to my channel. That's pretty easy. There's nothing more to do. For everybody who is in Austria on the 13th of October, I will have a talk in the Ars Electronica Center in Linz. I did a video about that and will link it uh, down below or maybe also uh, put it up in the corner. This is going to be a super uh, one at a time uh, opportunity to see my portraits and a really big laser projection screen. Uh, just you know the whole talk will be in German so you need to know that I guess. Uh, there is one more thing. I have a talk with Shane Balkovich and Boris Eldaksson about a very interesting topic. We will talk until uh, we have discussed everything. So this will be a live stream soon. We will do the announcement for the live stream soon. So check my channel uh, to uh, don't miss that. And this is going to be a hell of a conversation. I promise you, this is going to be super interesting. Otherwise, guys, uh, thanks for watching again and I'll be back. <laughs>